The formation of British Leyland on January 17, 1968 is a significant date in British automotive history. British Motor Holdings and Leyland Motor Corporation merged to form this new company. The goal of the merger was to create a large, nationalized British automaker capable of competing with foreign manufacturers. By combining these two major car manufacturers, British Leyland was expected to become a major player in the global automotive industry. The formation of British Leyland was a significant step forward for the British government, which was attempting to establish a nationalized car industry capable of competing with the United States and Germany at the time. The merger was seen as a way to create a company that could produce both high-quality and affordable automobiles. However, the newly formed British Leyland quickly encountered a number of difficulties. Labor strikes were one of the most difficult challenges, causing production delays and revenue loss. Further, the company faced financial difficulties as well as quality control issues. British Leyland struggled throughout the 1970s and 1980s, despite government intervention and efforts to turn the company around. In 1975, the British government nationalized and took over the company, investing heavily to turn it around. Despite these efforts, British Leyland never fully recovered, and it was privatized in the 1980s. The various divisions of the company were gradually sold off, and the remaining parts were reorganized as the Rover Group, which was later purchased by BMW. British Leyland manufactured many well-known and successful vehicles, though, including the Morris Marina. This compact car was introduced in 1971 and was a popular choice among British buyers looking for an affordable, reliable vehicle. It was produced in various versions and versions of engines. It was available as a saloon, coupe, and estate. The Triumph TR7 and TR8. These sports cars were produced by British Leyland's Triumph Division from 1975 to 1981. The TR7 was a small, two-seat sports car that was praised for its handling and performance, while the TR8 was a V8-powered version of the TR7. The Austin Allegro. This compact car was introduced in 1973 and was produced in various versions and engine sizes. It was available as a saloon, estate, and van. The Mini Clubman and the Mini 1275 GT, these were versions of the Mini which were inherited by British Leyland after the merger. The Clubman was introduced in 1969. It was a slightly larger version of the original Mini with a longer wheelbase and an estate variant. The 1275 GT was a sporty version of the Mini. The Rover SD1. This executive car was introduced in 1976 and was produced by British Leyland's Rover Division. The SD1 was well regarded for its sleek styling, spacious interior, and advanced features. It was available as a saloon and estate. The Leyland National Bus. This bus was produced by British Leyland from 1972 to 1984, it was a popular choice for public transportation around the world. Unless we not forget the Leyland Atlantean, a double-decker bus model manufactured by British Leyland Bus Division, a subsidiary of Leyland Motor Corporation. It was first manufactured in 1958, but it was still produced all the way up to 1986. The Atlantean was notable for its avant-garde design, which included rear-mounted engine, and a flat floor that ran the length of the bus, making it wheelchair-accessible. The Atlantean was built on a chassis that could accommodate a variety of body styles, including open-top, single-decker, and the legendary double-decker version. It was exported to several countries and served as a city bus, suburban bus, coach, and trolley bus. The PDR-11, a double-decker bus produced between 59 and 86, was one of the most popular Atlanteans. This model was widely used by UK public transportation operators and was also exported to Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and New Zealand. British Leyland was significant in the history of British automotive industry, despite its short-term success. The government's bold attempts to nationalize the automobile industry was also a significant step forward in the development of British automotive culture. These are 
interesting things with JC.